Eight months ago, I practiced the thousand-year-old traditional craft of hedge laying. Hedge laying is essentially the art of partially cutting a tree, folding it over, making sure that there is just enough outer bark and cambium layer to allow minerals and nutrients to flow up and down the tree. And come springtime, as the sap begins to rise up the tree, new buds are formed and these eventually turn into small saplings and then trees. If you lay enough trees down, particularly on a wooden border like this, you will eventually create a living hedge, a perfect home for small birds and mammals, and a great way to increase the biodiversity of your woodland or field. Now it's late September, eight months later, and I've come back to the area that I laid back in January to see the progress of my living hedge. So it's a little bit difficult to see, but because there's, there's so much dense foliage behind me of the nettles that are still up from the summer. But essentially, just move this out of the way gently. Down here, I don't know if you can see, but this is a pleached, pleaching cut that I made back last winter. Sorry for the wind, it's, um, it's really windy today. But you can see that's kind of dulled off quite nicely, the color now. Obviously that was really white when I cut into that cambium layer. I haven't actually sawn this one flat, so I do need to saw this bit off level, which I'll do this winter. But to give you an idea of new growth on this really low down where there's not much sunlight, this shoot here is totally green and that's new this year. So you can see that that whole shoot itself is actually green. It hasn't browned and darkened off yet where it started to mature. The leaves are still quite immature. That's a nice mature leaf there and they're just starting to orange at the top now. But that just gives you an idea of eight months growth on a very low down with very little sunlight. That's eight months old. So you can imagine in two years, you've got a fairly substantial hazel twig growing up that will offer more of that dense hedge line, which is what I'm going for to create that kind of wildlife habitat for birds and things like that and, and mammals. And so that's, that's a low down one. There's a few younger shoots down here at the base. So these are all new shoots coming off here where we, we cut this one off level, but we kept it vertical. So we cut this about four feet from the base. This shoot was already here. We left this thick one. All of these are new growth from seven months ago. And they're starting to bush off, grow out and shoot off quite nicely now. So we'll let those mature and grow off. It would be better to cut this lower down but I'm trying to create different layers of hedge here so it makes sense to leave some of it quite tall and some of it a little bit lower down and then I can fold this over when it's a nice and mature branch. Now I'm right on the boundary here of my woodland to the field there is a barbed wire fence down there which I need to repair again um, but essentially these nettles none of this was here last winter seven months ago this was just plain field uh, these obviously come up every year here, so it acts as natural hedge line anyway, which is great. And there's so many benefits of nettles you guys should, should probably know from watching my channel. But I just wanted to show you where I've laid down this branch, this hazel tree here. Here is a bit of growth that you get in the open area with lots of sunlight. Here's how much it can grow. Just bear with me while I move this nettle. But if you can see that, this shoot is from this year um, and we're looking at I mean that's slightly off the ground but well over a meter meter and a half I know it's my height but remember the tree is is off the ground it's not where my feet are so yeah easily um, nearly two meters of growth there which is impressive for 
something that I only laid down seven months ago. I'll just wave it about so you can see it a bit better. Sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? But there you go. That's uh, really nice to see. And there's actually a lot more younger shoots on this particular tree here. So um, this is great. And we'll see it much easier, to be honest, in the winter when all this has died back and I can access here, we'll be able to see it a lot better. And I'll show you the newer shoots, but let's carry on down the hedge line and see what other shoots we can find. Here's quite a few cuts that I made seven months ago. And you can see they're dulled off nicely. These ones I actually did level off. And that part is living now. So that's still passing nutrients up and down the tree. That's not been a great cut, that one, because it's split. But it does have, if I show you without stinging myself. So that particular tree is this one here. And if you see, there is a young shoot coming up. So despite being hacked and folded over, that hazel is now growing small shoots. Look, there's another one coming up. It's curved right under that one to come up and grow up here. So that's really quite impressive. And if you look where I've made actual, totally severed some of the branches here, it's basically told the tree and sent a message that when spring was coming to shoot up and send up new growth and look at all this new growth here this has been the tree's response to me cutting it flush off here and obviously making pleaching cuts so partial cuts there and folding them over the tree has gone into survival mode and sent up all these new shoots which are about waist height at the, at the tallest one at the moment so that's seven months growth there coming up there so that's Pretty good, pretty cool. It's bushed out fairly, fairly successfully for seven months. Whoop, we made it. So here's another load of hazel that I've laid down. The pleaching cuts are just behind my back here. And this is quite a dense, overcast, shaded area. Uh, there's, some, there's some ash here. There's, there's two large ash trees here. There's some fairly mature hazel. So there's lots of shade that's thrown over this area. Um, but even with those trees being laid down as they are, they are sending up that new growth. And here is the beginning of my hedge. If you can see this here, this is seven months growth on this one. Again, probably 60 centimetres, 70 centimetres or so there. There's lots of new fresh growth down here coming off this one. And this one here again, 40, 50 centimetres. And there's actually loads, I'm quite impressed with the uh, how often the buds have shot up here. There's loads here, it's really thick there. There's even some coming off this branch down here. But you can see wherever there are these the green leaves, this is the start of what is gonna be the hedge eventually but this is going to take years this is an ongoing process part of the woodland management that I've, I've been doing on my my border here to the field and it's just yeah it's a really enjoyable fairly labor intensive technique but really enjoyable winter winter job and i'll get back to it again this winter by um, reinforcing these binders probably pushing them down a bit cutting these a little bit lower because i don't want them really high i'd like to be able to see the view and uh, just to give you an idea, here's, here's a new growth here, and that is shot up well beyond the binder's height of the actual wattle fence. And that's up here now, a couple of feet above the tip, tips of the stakes. So that one's done really well. Again, all seven, roughly seven months growth. Eight months now, actually, I think, but another one here that's new. So eventually this will throw up more shoots and this will get thicker and thicker and thicker and I'll have a nice, and I can cut these off in a few years time or I can fold them over again and just keep that dense hedge all along here because all these nettles are going to die back in the winter. So it'd be good to have a nice dense boundary here for wildlife. This particular tree which I laid over is still growing like sideways. <laughs> it's still got its branches on. I didn't limb this one, I thought I'd leave the limbs on. And actually you can see, it's still doing quite well. 
even these little shoots here are being drawn to the sunlight. We've have finally had plenty of rain, so they're getting the, the uh, nutrients that they need and life goes on and we make something that's partially chopped in half, it's crazy. This one here is quite good new growth that, the thickness on that one. So it just goes to show what you can gain in about seven to eight months from uh, laying down your hedge, your first cuts. The majority of them have actually gone beyond the height of the stakes and binders themselves. So that's good to know. What's really interesting is that Traditionally, you're meant to lay the tree in the uphill direction because the tree can then send those nutrients in the natural direction that it would anyway, as if it was growing straight up from the ground. They say that if you lay them the opposite direction going downhill, the tree struggles to get those nutrients up and down um, through the cambium layer and it just struggles to grow. And I thought I'd try it out and test it. And it's true. Because here, these ones here are all going the opposite way of every other one that I've laid down towards the uh, corner of my woodland that way. And it's really interesting because the buds are there and the shoots are there, but they're so small, they're really struggling and they're very thin and they're very wispy. They've almost got no substance to them. And I wonder if that is because they're all lying the wrong way. And so they're not getting those nutrients back up to the roots of the tree and back up to the, uh, to the buds. So that's a really interesting test is actually they are weaker, the growth is weaker on, on the trees that I've laid downhill. Well worth doing that test to be honest. I'm really pleased I did it and I know now in the future anything that grows up here behind me I'll lay down this way and not that way. Another thing that does happen is that all of the, when you make these pleaching cuts down here it naturally sends up shoots from the stump itself, the overall stool of the tree sends up loads of new growth because that's where most of the energy is is down there and so there's a lot more whippy branches that are doing well and coming up from that stump since cutting it making those cuts last last winter really lots of growth coming through So here's a really good one, fairly thick hazel tree. There's actually some smaller buds still coming through. But if you look at this, we have growth on the top, top side of the branch. And even these ones that came up to the side all ended up curling towards the sun that way. But if you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine new shoots all the way along here, ready to come up and create the hedge. And this is a nice clear one, it gets a lot more light. So, interestingly though, it curves back down the tree, down that way, it's quite a bendy branch. And so the growth is not so straight, I've noticed on this one. And I wonder if that's a result of that, or whether it is just a light, the amount of light that's got in here, or not being able to get in here, but that one's a really good one, nice and clear to see. And so we come to my favourite one. Uh, this is, I'm really excited to show you this one because I remember when I was laying this particular branch, I did a double cut. So I did the first cut right near the base, as you traditionally do. And because of the way I needed to get the tree around this stump and the way it was bending, I actually made a second cut further up the branch and still kept the cambium layer intact. And look at this growth as a result, it's really bushy. In fact, it's probably sent the most shoots up 
out of all the other ones that I've done. And I don't know whether that is a stress response of the tree where it's had multiple cuts that it's actually sent up more shoots. That's what I'm guessing. But I'm just really impressed with the amount of dense foliage that it's shot up here. And it runs all the way into the second branch down here, which still has plenty of thick foliage. Admittedly, it's not quite as thick the hazel shoots coming up, but there is more of them. And when you're thinking of laying a hedge, it's nice to get a good mixture of the thicker branches for the stability and the stronger winds uh, and the future of the hedge laying, but also that dense bushiness, which helps to give animals good cover like small birds and things like that. So really pleased with that. Glad that the double cut worked. And yeah, again, that's what I can get from seven months of, of growth. So it'd be interesting. We still got another month at least of good weather before the uh, leaves will all fall off. It'd be interesting to see what happens next year. Boy, <laughs> nearly got a squirrel. Yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that slightly different episode. Uh, I had so many comments on previous Wooden Life's videos, especially the hedge lane one, um, of you guys basically saying, you know, can you show us the progress uh, of, of, of what's happened? And um, when I was doing research into hedge lane, I'm looking up how other people have done it in the past and the historic ways of doing it and read books. Um, there was not too much information out there on how the progress of it and how much you can expect to gr the growth to be in a certain amount of time. For example, after a year. Well, there was more things after a year, two years, things like that. But from when I chopped it to winter, in the winter, eight months ago, to now, September, in that sh shorter period of time, there wasn't really much information out there. So I thought I'd provide you guys with the progress of what it really is like the real-time growth eight months on from cutting those trees and laying them down and I've been really impressed to be fair uh, and it's it probably sounds really nerdy but it's just a really satisfying thing not only is it a technique that's been used for thousands of years across Europe and the British Isles but more so because it's part of my journey into woodland management so traditionally it was more done in a kind of field setting um, I just wanted to apply it to a bit more of a woodland setting because it's a, it is an ancient craft and it's something that I've always wanted to give a go and I'm really pleased I did because I've learned a lot along the way and I always say that you definitely will learn more from doing something as opposed to reading and watching. You can read and watch as much as you want and you can soak in as much knowledge as you, you can and that is great but when you apply it and you make the mistakes 
that's really when you learn the most. And for example, when I made that double cut, I didn't really know how much growth that would throw up. But at the same time, that growth wasn't so strong. And then when I laid the trees the other way, uh, I kind of expected it to, I didn't expect it, sorry, to have any growth. I expected it to fail, but it still managed to have some growth, which was quite impressive. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a random thing, but it's part of my journey here on the, the Woodland Life series. I'm coming up now to a year soon of owning the woodland. When I first uh, completed on the woodland, bought it, I think it was um, end of October, November 2021. So I'm going to put together a, a kind of montage soon of my journey in that year and what we've done here with Dad. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be really nice to go through that footage and see the progress made, but also to see the changing seasons. I'm coming into the very last part of the woods that I've not seen in seasons. So I've seen, when I first bought it, it was autumn and the trees were incredible. This beach woodland was absolutely beautiful with orange leaves and they're just starting to turn now. So I'm really, really looking forward to this time of year, especially here in this beach area in the hazel. I appreciate you watching guys, I do. Thank you so much for everyone who's following along on the adventure, subscribed. Um, it's been a hell of a journey and I do really appreciate each and every one of you and your feedback as well in the comments. It's really nice to try and interact with some of you and see what you think of what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, as usual, subscribe to Dad's channel, TA Fishing. Put links in the description below. Uh, if you're interested, by the way, this is made, I've used this before. This is um, handmade in Britain by a blacksmith called uh, Trevor, TJM Metalworks. It's really neat. You can adjust it like a little cat. I used the kettle on it, but you can adjust the height and it's just a stake in the ground and then a hook on the end, but he does other things for them as well. But for me, I just really love the simplicity of it. So I'll pop a link to this in the description below if you guys want to help out another UK maker. Thanks for watching folks, and I'll see you in the next one.